Good morning, everybody. Um, do you guys know it's behind me? Yeah, well, if you do, I'm sorry. Uh, but it's a well motor to run a pivot and supply power to the pivot. And um, although these fields aren't planted yet, this field was a soybean field and it will be a seed corn field this year. Um, before we have a crop out here, we're going to be, uh, I and you with me, are going to be going around to all of our well motors and making sure that they start, making sure that like batteries run, they have an okay oil level. And then we're going to see if the pivot moves forwards and backwards um, so that when it is time to irrigate, we are all ready to go. So come along with me as we do that. So at this first one, it's already a bad sign because both battery terminal cables are connected. So I'm willing to bet that battery is dead. So that's unfortunate. Luckily, I already brought four new ones just in case. Um, I really don't like doing this job um, because there's usually mice um, that have chewed things and they probably have built a nest in there over winter time. Um, and it's really loud and I just, it's not a very fun job. So that's why you guys are coming with me to try to make this a little bit more fun. First thing I'm going to do is put my hair up because I just don't want it getting caught or like tangled in anything. The PTO shaft won't be turning because I'm not pumping any water and the PTO shaft is what actually runs the well and pumps the water up. But still, just in case the clutch is burnt out or I just, just like to keep my hair back. And then the next step is going to be putting in earplugs because it's just super, super loud. And I wanna have hearing when I'm 40. And then next, of course, gloves. Let's see if any mice run out. Mice. All right, I'm willing to bet the battery is dead, but we're gonna try to start it just in case. Um, okay, so the PTO shaft can spin freely, so the clutch is disengaged. Uh, this switch is on start, so that's good. I have low expectations. Oh. Okay, two things. Jump came out of there and the PTO shaft spun. So there's definitely a mouse nest in there. Ugh, let's try this again. Oh my goodness, oh, I just don't like it. Go away, mice! all the junk in there so given my deductive reasoning and phone call to dad the um natural gas is turned off at the road so i need to go get a big pipe wrench and turn that on never done that before so on my way to the farm i'm just going to slowly bounce across these rows and check if there are any flat tires or any obviously leaky gearboxes. I just uh, kind of let the steering wheel do what it wants. <laughs> well, hey, I got this one started. The other one was giving me trouble and I figured if I just walked away and tried again, it'd probably start. So I just went on to this one, started right up. This is a pivot control box. 
here. Oh, and this is perfect. A little over 500 volts. I'm just going to see if it actually st starts moving forward. Actually, I'm gonna go backwards and I'm gonna run it at a little higher percentage. Start and look at that. All of the tires are moving. All right, everything worked. Pivot went forwards and backwards. We are all set. As I'm checking the tires and gearboxes on this one that started up so nice. If you're unfamiliar with what a pivot is, it's like a giant sprinkler irrigation system that we use to water our crops all summer, which is really nice and gives us an advantage because if we do happen to have a drought or just a really dry summer, um, we have water on demand, which is super nice. So they're a total pain and they break down a lot, um, but it's a really nice uh, kind of like security. Um, so no matter what we plant, we do know we're going to be able to water it and that's a lot. So here's what the pivot looks like, just looking down at straight like this. Um, and here's the nozzles that the water comes out of and it just like rotates around and sprinkles. Um, but if you look here, this drop has dropped. So it needs to be replaced. Here's what the little spinny thing looks like. It just like spins around in a circle, but it appears, oops, I don't know what in the world, it just like, broke right off so make a note of that that is going to have to be replaced because water is just going to just shoot straight out of that and probably tear a hole in the field <sighs> Uh, look at this, another one. I am so curious what caused that. Hmm. Not exactly sure what's going on at this corner, but apparently big stuff because that seems to be a lot of equipment. This pivot point looks a little bit different um, because it's electrically controlled. So don't have much for a control panel here. This is what I'm working with. Um, and then also that field net box and then the valley box, of course, as well. Um, but we're able to have an electric pivot only on specific part, like specific pivots, not all of them, because A, it's really expensive, and B, you need to have three phase power within like a quarter mile or something like that. And there's three phase out here. So we're able to have an electric pivot, which is really, really nice. You'll notice this pivot doesn't have drops coming down, but it's got sprinklers on the top of the pipe. You know, I was thinking as I'm going along checking all these, I don't think a single one of our pivots is the same. Every one of them has like something a little different or quirky about it. And so it's another reason why it's good to be doing this because we haven't run pivots since like August-ish or September. And so it's good to just like remind myself what all these pivots are like and all their little quirks. I am super impressed. Another one that just started right up. And uh, that's what a pivot looks like when it's moving. So the pivots get turned with those little gear boxes there right behind the tires. The gear boxes get turned with that center drive. And this pivot looks to be running okay. Good sign. I had to come back here because I forgot to disconnect this battery cable. There we go. All right. On to the next one. Well, this is a new one. It looks like all this wire has become uncoiled. So I'm gonna crawl up and try to arrange this nicely, I guess. Well, 
better for now, I guess. That was a mouse nest that's blowing all over me. Since this started, now the computer is just booting up, getting all started and loaded. And once that starts, then I can actually start moving the pivot forward. Got it running. The volts are a little low. I think I might need to turn it up just a tad bit, but it's running at 100% in reverse. Okay, so I'm going to bring you guys back to one of the original videos that I filmed like for YouTube and it's called Intro to Me and I propped my phone up on this pickup. I propped it right here and it was a really poorly filmed video, but it was pretty much just me saying like who I was and what I wanted from this YouTube channel and never in a million years did I expect it would get to this point but anyways so this is kind of like a special this is the first field i ever farmed um so this is kind of a special location looks like we have like some badger problems or something those definitely need to be filled in but i have something brand new to show you guys so we have just had like nothing but problems with this well motor it's been just like a nightmare to start um and so we had this whole well pulled because it was falling apart so this is a brand new, like, hi, you, you can't see it, but like 100, 150, 200 feet down under there is all brand new. So that's great. And because um, uh, we were having so many problems, we decided to go electric, which is so exciting. So all I had to do to start this pivot was press that green button and then went around to the panel box and look at that perfect volts and the pivot is started so now i'm just going to run well drive and check the whole pivot but i am so excited to have that box because it makes my life so much easier so i can't record um a video while the radio is on because it's like copyright infringement and videos will get taken down and all that so i always like turn the music off or like the radio down when I start recording, but I just wanted to give you guys a full picture. As I'm driving from pivot to pivot and checking all the nozzles and gearboxes and tires and all this, I am listening to classic rock. So just like kind of have classic rock music playing in the back of your mind um, as this video goes on. <laughs> So I started this pivot and I was driving out to check all the tires and stuff and I found this. I hope there's no animal living under it. Nope. It's, I think it's from that one right there. It's supposed to cover all the electrical stuff. Just add it to the list of stuff I found today. All right, so we have successfully checked all the pivots and like well motors and stuff. But we're moving on to a field that has no pivot on it. However, it's still irrigated. So this is irrigated through drip irrigation. So underneath the soil, like maybe 10 to 12 inches, there's like black tape that's maybe this big around and there's tiny little holes perforated in it. And so water like soaks up. Um, and so before anything's planted, um, I'm going to turn it on and if there's any like holes the animals have chewed through, water is going to push up and make an obvious hole in the ground like water's bubbling up and we wanna get that fixed before anything is planted out here. So just going to turn these on as like electric motors um, and flag any of the holes so we can come out and fix them. Probably need to turn this valve off. Oops. Okay, so I shut, I shut that valve off. <laughs> oh my goodness, oh no, oh no, okay. Okay, hold on here. Okay, okay, uh, I think, <laughs> I think water stopped spraying out from everywhere. <laughs> okay, everything appears to be working all right. So there's not enough water pressure to irrigate the entire field at one time. So that's why we have these little valves right here. 
So right now, um, let's see here, closed. Right now the north side of the field, this half is being irrigated. And then after a certain amount of time, once I flag all the holes down here, then I'll close those two valves and open those two valves. And then the south half of the field will be watered. I am going to give this some time for like the water to actually soak through the ground. Um, and I'm going to go get like a ranger or four wheeler or something and some flags because it's a lot easier to spot leaks when you're in um, something with an open cab instead of a pickup. This is like the flow meter here. So let's see what we got. We got a little under 450 gallons a minute. That's, uh, that's pretty good. Here are my flags from last year. Just going to reuse these. Oh, okay, they're a little gross, but they'll do. <laughs> oh, icky. Got this nice little box. Ugh. All right, off to flag some holes. No holes in the irrigation yet, but this is exactly what would cause one. Animals, like I don't know, gophers, badgers, I don't know what they are, but they dig these holes and just chew right through the tape. So just gonna try to fill in the hole a little bit, I guess. Well, apparently I'm not gonna be able to tell if there's any leaks until like 12 hours or something because the lines have to fill up. So we'll do that tomorrow. But now I'm headed out to Rut Slice. Here is my trusty steed for the rest of the day, 8530. If anyone is interested in this boom truck, it's for sale. I'm gonna get in here and start it up and then I will unpin my wings. Here's my treasure from the last time I was in here. Okay. <sighs> Maybe time to clean this tractor cab out. Something I think is kind of funny about the root slicer is for some reason two stalks or three stalks manage to just stay right here. I don't know I don't know how that happens. wings up. Wings are folded. Hazards are on. Steering wheel is down. Throttle up and flies are out so you know it's springtime. Time to head to the field. I am all unfolded. Now I'm just going to set my auto steer line. My auto steer is not quite right, so I'm just driving it and there's a lot of trash in this field, so I'm watching behind me most of the time, making sure that nothing gets balled up. And dad is also in this field um, fertilizing because we are going to be planting corn here again. So he's running our new anhydrous farm. So far, everything is working like a dream, except for the auto steer, but I don't really want to fix that right now, so I'm just driving along. It is so windy outside, so I'm gonna just film from in here. But I am using my special Laura Farms Edition Stellar Fuel Trailer, because I was in a pinch. My tractor got down to one bar of fuel while I was out here red slicing. And uh, this is my first time actually like using it in a situation where I would use a, tr a fuel trailer. And it's perfect, the pump, I've been sitting here for two minutes maybe and it's already pumped almost 40 gallons. Very, 
very impressed. So thank you so much to Stellar Industries for sending this out. I love it and it's being put to really good use. The really, well, there's many really weird things about farming, but the thing I'm thinking about in particular this evening is that no matter how late you work, like if I work till 10 p.m. tonight, that wouldn't make me have any less work tomorrow. Like, the work is never ending. Like, the to-do list is never done. Like, the only time that working late would maybe gain you some time is, like, before a weather event. So, like, uh, we're harvesting and it's going to rain the next day. So, yes, if I work until midnight or whenever the rain starts, that saves me some work on the other side of the weather event. But like right now when we're just in prep for planting and then moving into planting, the work, it will never be done. So no matter how late I work today, I will not be able to go home any earlier tomorrow, which is kind of depressing. Um, but I'm, I'm never bored, I guess. <laughs> and with that being said, I root sliced all, it's really hard to tell on the camera, but all over there and most over there. So I'm going to call it quits for today. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for watching today's video. And I think we had a really good day. It was super productive. Um, so yeah, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.